on. I don't see the light. Okay, I will call this meeting to order and somebody put a rubber end on my hammer. So no fun anymore. And we'll start with Pledge of Allegiance. And Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. United States of America. To the Republic. One nation. One God. God. Indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Yeah, justice. Call, please. Bob Smith. I am here. From? Here. Tara? Here. Cryer? Here. Alvarado? Here. Vallejo? Grace Vallejo? Here. David Couch. Here. Goodman. Here. Philip Smith. Here. Corolla. Present. Mallard. Here. Senevich? Senevich? Here. Rena? Oh. Did I hear you, Alcala, from District 9, Alcala. Zorna Alcala. Here. Thank you. Navarro. Here. And Kiernan. John Kersey filling in for Kiernan. Thank you, Mr. Kersey. Thank you, everyone. Okay, we're good. Uh, public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the council on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the council. Council members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may not be quite the to make a referral to staff, factual information, or request staff to report back to council at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Are there any? Anywhere. There's none here. None on the phone. No emails. Okay, we're good. Uh, consent agenda opportunity for public comment. Same rules for the consent agenda. Are there any comments, public, for the consent agenda? Seeing none. I have a motion on the consent agenda. Motion. Vallejo, motion to approve. Bill Smith, second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call vote. Bob Smith? Yes. Aye. All right. Yes. Yes. Colorado? Yes. Vallejo? Yes. Yes. Hi. Yes. Right. Yes. Mallard? 
nhé Yes. Transportation Improvement Program Draft Amendment. Mr. Pacheco. Hello, Raquel. Are you there? Raquel Pacheco. Hello? Can you hear me now? We hear you now. Hello? Okay, yeah. great. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. FTIP Amendment number 13 includes revisions to the transit program. The public review period ends July 17. Ferncog Executive Director will consider approval of the amendment on July 20th. State and federal approval is required. At this time, I ask the chair to please open the public hearing, allow for public comment, and then close the public hearing. Thank you, Ms. Pacheco. I will open the public hearing. Are there any public comments? Anyone on the phone for public comment? Okay, Mr. Hearing none, I will close the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Caltrans report. Ms. Alcala? Mr. Navarro? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Michael Navarro with Caltrans. Hope everybody's safe and well. Uh, I want to make a couple announcements before I uh, get into my report. Uh, first of all, I wanted to welcome our new director, Diana Gomez. We're really excited to have her. We think she's going to be a great addition to our team and welcome her back to Caltrans, where she's from. Uh, she started back on July 13th, and um, I believe she may be on the call. Diana, do you want to say hello real quick, introduce yourself before I give my report? Or Yeah, thank you, uh, Michael. Bye. Yeah, I just wanted to... Uh, to say I'm really looking forward to working with John and uh, everyone on the team. And uh, I'll be meeting with Aaron and uh, some of the, the local agencies as well, uh, just to get uh, an understanding of concerns or issues or things that you'd like for Caltrans to focus on. So I really do look forward to working with everyone. Thank you. Hello, this is Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Diana, for uh, coming and, and talking and, and being open and uh, appreciate the time and congratulations on your job. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Diana. I'm going to finish my report if that's okay. And, and yes, we are excited to have Diana and I know she'll be a, a positive presence and you'll really get a chance to know her. So thank you. Um, just want to touch base. You talked last month about preparing the draft and taking current for the cooperation and working on our state route 46 uh, trade corridor grant application. We we're making the final edit today, and that was submitted up to headquarters uh, today for review and consideration for the trade corridor for state route 46. Um, I had one follow up item I wanted to talk about for Councilman Reyna and Supervisor Couch. Last month we talked a little bit about 43 and 8th Street. Um, I do want you to know we're still working with my traffic safety folks and um, my complete streets folks on this one. We did go out there and paint some red curb uh, to hopefully keep cars from parking near the intersection and improve pedestrian visibility for the motorists. Um, we also did put in an order where we want to come in uh, in the near future. We're going to come in and, and restripe that crosswalk that was a concern and put more of the ladder style crosswalk configuration to make it a little more ped friendly. And we are working with, with Wasco with Bertiana and talking about um, future plans as far as safe routes to school 
And I think that we might want to look at in the up upcoming grant uh, program in October, usually the planning grant to look at maybe some other complete streets elements that might enhance this area. So um, I just want you to know, I didn't forget about your request, and we're still looking at possible ways to improve uh, pedestrian access to that corridor. And I'll Michael, keep I really appreciate that. I, I really appreciate that. Uh, and I think uh, this is uh, Poplar and Highway 46. Is that correct? I think you said H Street. Or is it uh, 43 yeah, there, and no, 40, Yeah, for, yeah 40, 46 and Poplar we talked about as well. Um, the, the activities I was referring to were at 43 and 8th Street with the crosswalk at, there. Okay. Right, right, very good. And then 46 I and Poplar, we, 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 and of course, and then 46 and Poplar, we did talk about doing investigations, so we're still looking at that intersection as well. But um, it is something, like I said, I think the best approach would be to circle back with your, with your team and talk about the possibilities of pursuing maybe like a Caltrans planning grant in the fall. Um, that would give you a, give you the opportunity to look at more of a more of a look at more totality of all the pedestrian issues uh, pertaining to your residents, and we could probably tackle those in, in one stretch with a complete street type study or say Brussels school type study. So I want to continue to work with your staff on that level. If that's okay. Um, yes. Thank you, Michael. Ask, really appreciate the. Thank update. you, Councilman. Absolutely, I appreciate that. Um, as far as projects, Route 46, Segment 4A. As we indicated last month, all lanes and ramps are open. Uh, that project in its final stage is finishing up this month. The only thing they were waiting for was some high advi um, some advisory radio components that they're completing to finish that project. Um, Cash Creek Bridge replacement, that's to replace the bridge on 58, uh, eight miles east of Tehachapi. Uh, work currently includes removing the abutments, wing wall, key form and pouring the drain foundation. Uh, estimated project completion is August of this year. The 58 roadway this is a rehab project, the gap, gap closure rehab project. Uh, as far as the configuration out there in the westbound, the lane closure and traffic will be split from Cottonwood Road to P Street. This closure will continue for the next couple months. And in the eastbound direction, there's also a lane closure. Traffic will be split from P Street to Cottonwood Creek. Uh, the stage of construction should be complete by August. Estimated project completion for this one is December of this year. Uh, Bell Terrace Overcrossing, construct auxiliary lane on 99 from Bell Overcrossing to Brundage Lane. Um, that project currently scheduled completion date is, is February, end of February 2021. Um, currently, the work at Bell Terrace Overcrossing, that deck was poured end of last month. It's in its cure stages, and the project completion, we're looking at it actually will be late uh, winter, early spring of 2021. Uh, Bakersfield, Bakersfield Freeway Connector Project is modifying the interchange at State Route 9958. Um, work is progressing this project. Majority of the activity continues to be on the structure work. And that contract is scheduled for completion in, in August of 2021. There were some complaints about the dust and the shoulders. Um, so we have been working with a contractor on, on making sure those are swept routinely and maintained. And Stockdale Highway, State Route 43 Roundabout. Uh, contract is currently scheduled for completion mid-summer. Uh, right now, the final uh, hot mix asphalt lifts are in place. Final striping has been completed for the roundabout. Uh, there were some lighting conflicts. Those have been, been resolved, and the contract is currently proceeding with installation. Those lighting fixtures, so right now we're just wrapping up some punch list concerns on that project to wrap that up. And let's see, almost wrapping up here. State Route 99, Fast Freight Corridor Project. The CRCP has been placed at David Kopis Ramp. All Lane 3 CRCP for this product is completed and cured. Uh, David Kopis Ramp is closed. This project will move into a Stage 8 construction by the end of July. Uh, that stage of construction will consist of Lane 2 reconstruction. It will begin at the I-5 overcrossing and work towards the north. Anticipated completion of this project is June 2021. And finish up Palm Avenue over crossing the Beardsley Canal Bridge. This project has resumed work uh, since June 18th. Some tentative wrap openings coming up. The northbound 99 Airport Drive off ramp scheduled for early August. Uh, the northbound 99 California on ramp is scheduled for early August as well. Uh, traffic switch to the next phase is tentative for mid August which will place traffic on the outside lanes. 
And with that, that completes my report. I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions if you have any. Any questions for District 6? Hearing none, uh, District 9. Yeah, hi, good evening. My name is Danae Alcala. I'm the uh, newly appointed Deputy District Director for Planning and Environmental in District 9. Nice to see you all. Glad to be here. Um, for reporting, I want to thank uh, the staff over at Kern Cog for helping us with the TSEP application for State Route 58 truck climbing lane that was submitted to Caltrans headquarters for their review today. We greatly appreciate Uh, for traffic advisory, we have a State Route 58 and 202 dig out project going on. They're replacing panels of hot mixed asphalt for pavement preservation. Uh, on State Route 202, I wanted to highlight that they're going to found off on ramp and off ramp at State Route 202 and Tucker at 58 overnight on this coming Sunday, the 19th, from 5 a.m. Monday morning. Uh, and then work on the 58 from the Keen exit. They're replacing those HMA panels on the roadway. And uh, one, one lane will be closed in each direction with minimal delays Monday through Friday from 7 to 5. We also have a seal coat project going on. That's on State Route 178 from State Route 14 to, uh, to 7.3 miles west of the intersection. And they're going to be striping lanes Travelers can encounter minimal delays with this project. Our Rosamond Mojave Rehabilitation Project, the contract has been awarded. We are waiting for contract approval, which we anticipate at the end of this month, and construction, I presume, will follow shortly thereafter. And I just also wanted to let you know that our Atlanta Cartago four-lane expressway project, which you are MOU partners on, the Cog, um, Kern County is, has uh, successfully achieved its ready to list milestone at the end of June. And that's all I have. If you have any questions, thank you. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, uh, Executive Director's report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Board Members. I have uh, a little bit more than half a dozen items. I'll go quickly, though. I'm uh, very proud to uh, announce that the deadline for our federal bill grant of July 2nd was met. Was met. Uh, we did not lose the uh, $17.5 million that we received from uh, Congressman McCarthy and former uh, Tom Congressman Valadeo. Uh, I want to publicly thank Kern County for uh, doing the, the right-of-way work, Caltrans, FHWA, PG&E, Chevron, and the staff here. Uh, we could not have uh, delivered this project without everyone working together. As a reminder, we, Kern Cog received that um, $17.5 million federal build grant in December of 2018. And uh, work will be underway within the next uh, six to nine months. And we, we will improve uh, roughly two miles going right through the middle of uh, the community of Lost Hills with that money. I'm, I'm sad to announce that on uh, June 19th, Paul Van Kenninenberg, um, the CTC commissioner who uh, represented uh, the interests of the Central Valley was relieved by the governor. That was the day after our last board meeting. He was replaced that same day with uh, Leanne Eager, who some of you may know, who's uh, 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 from Fresno, California. I know her. She's involved with economic development and a whole bunch of uh, other areas. So uh, sorry to hear about Paul's loss, but I'm glad that uh, Leanne was appointed the same day Paul was relieved. I've been working over the past month with um, Supervisor Scribner, Congressman McCarthy's office, Supervisor Scribner's uh, staff, and Councilmember Lisenovich and his staff uh, for connecting Cal City Boulevard to Edwards Air Force Base. I have a follow-up meeting with uh, McCarthy staff and Department of Defense staff on Monday, and I will report uh, 
the next time we meet on on progress on that long long overdue project to connect Cal City Boulevard to the north gate of Edwards. Uh, just this week, um, City of Shafter, City of Bakersfield, Kern County, High Speed Rail, Caltrans, and Kern Cog staff all met to discuss uh, the integration and coordination of all all parties' circulation elements uh, for what we're what we've received a, uh, a second grant for now, which is studying the north edge of the metropolitan Bakersfield area, southern edge, end of chapter, to coordinate all the um, logistics, warehousing, and goods movement activities, and try to get, and we will get there, it may take a little while, all parties on the same page. I'm, I'm glad to report that we've made significant progress and that we received a, a grant to continue to work on this area and I will continue to uh, report on that. I've also worked over the last month um, on some issues with the Wasco Amtrak station. I've been working with the city manager of Wasco, high speed rail um, authority staff and uh, Amtrak staff and I will keep, keep you up to date on that. Uh, I've also been participating in the B3K uh, initiative, which is better boundless or better Bakersfield boundless current effort uh, that we were exposed to uh, almost a year ago uh, by some members of the governor's staff. A um, couple more items: Arvin, Wasco, and Lamont. I'm uh, proud to announce that Mio Car will be uh, coming back. It's been shut down for the last several months uh, because of COVID. Um, it will be a phased uh, reintroduction, um, provided we go, don't go back into another lockdown, but um, uh, it's likely that that will be back. Just a few more items. Um, tomorrow is a joint virtual meeting of the California Transportation Commission, Air Resources Board, and Department of Housing Community Development that's being held virtually. I will attend that meeting. Um, there was a CTC meeting uh, June 24th, which I attended. Um, several actions were taken on our Kern County projects. There's an upcoming meeting of the California Transportation Commission on August 12th and 13th, where there will also be um, items on the agenda for Kern County. Subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions? Hearing none, I will adjourn that meeting and start the next one. We'll work with the same roll call. Are there any public comments for the Kerncog meeting? I see no one here. Anyone on the phone? None. Then I will take public comments for the consent agenda. Seeing none here, are there any on the phone for that? Hearing none, I'll take motion. Motion by Cryer. Second by Crump. And a second by Crump. Roll call, please. Bob Smith? Yes. Crump? Hi. Cryer? Yes. Alvarado? Yes. Baleo? Baleo? Yes. Couch? Yes. Scrivener? Hi. Philip Smith? Yes. Gorilla? I had already indicated yes. Gorilla, yes. Now? Yes. Rainer? Yes. Thank you, everyone.
Thank you, Executive Director's Report. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman. Just one item. I'm pleased to report that the San Joaquin Valley Regional Policy Council and the Multi Agency Working Group for Housing met on June 26th. Uh, current COGS representatives on those two committees are Chairman Smith, Russ Wigner, and Kathy Kraut. And uh, the most significant item that they dealt with was accepting uh, another five or six dollars from the state to. Uh, Tonight, there's a um, article from just a couple of days ago about um, how we can expect less miles to be driven in the future, which will help us achieve our air quality goal. Progress support for uh, all the regional projects in the time timeline covering July, August, and September. Comments from members or questions? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I have uh, a couple comments. Gorilla from Marvin. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank staff for, uh, again, assisting Arvin with the uh, the Caltrans and ATP issue. Uh, that's that we accepted, and uh, today I signed the, uh, the corrective action plan. appreciate all the work that it took to get that done. I want to thank uh, Supervisors Scrivener and Couch for uh, agreeing to work with the city to uh, implement that project uh, as we uh, oversee it. Um, uh, potential, actually definite benefits to the community and hopefully we'll be able to be successful again in the future and applying for those grants. Um, and uh, additionally, I want to take the opportunity to, uh, since there's decision makers represented from uh, most of the cities here in the county and the county, to address the COVID situation. Uh, as we've seen, we're teeter-tottering on the edge of going back into a shutdown. And the governor, actually the county uh, director of public health anticipates the county going back into a uh, potential shutdown. And so I want to urge the importance of doing what we can to enforce the governor's mandate. I don't know how many people have to get sick, how many lives have to be lost, how many more people are unemployed, how many businesses have to suffer for us to take action to do what we can to enforce the orders, to get a hold of this virus, and to improve the economy. If we don't take the actions now, this is just gonna prolong the issue. So I urge every elected official here to do what they can within their respective jurisdiction to enforce the orders. A few months ago, we had members of this board applauding the fact that Kern County got out of the shutdown, that got off of the governor's list. And where are we at now? Not in a better situation. My businesses here in the city say we cannot go through in and out, in and out. In and out of shutdown, not in shutdown. So I, I urge every single one of you here, do what we need to do to get a hold of this virus. Thank you. Thank you, any other comments? Uh, this is Grace Vallejo from the city of Delano. Uh, I, I strongly support everything that the uh, Mayor Garola is saying, um, but I think part of it has to do, as he's mentioned, about our local leadership. I personally went into a couple of places and noticed uh, that the counter person didn't have a mask. There was no shield there in front of them, and two customers walked in, no mask. I had my mask on, and I advised him that the governor does have a, I don't know if it's called a committee, a task force, and they're going throughout the state checking to see if anybody is not following the guidelines. And I know it, it is happening because one of our local restaurants was cited. Uh, I don't know what it was they were doing or not doing, but they were cited. And I think maybe we have to do more of the enforcement locally. Every time I ask, it's well, it's up to the public health department, and uh, put with the county or it's up to the governor for the enforcement. It can't be. There's no way they can reach out to all these cities within their county or within the state. And I'm not sure how 
um, we should go about it, but any suggestions from anybody would be great that we can take back to our council and say, we need to put this in place as far as what we locally are going to be doing to make sure our businesses you know, are out there doing what they're supposed to do. The, the gentleman didn't even know. He says, really? I said, yes. And you can lose your license. So he said, okay, I'm going to tell the owner so that we can do that. So it, it's a matter of educating the businesses. And I don't know, I don't know how we, we are going to do it, but we definitely need to get uh, boots on the ground in our own cities so that we can get that enforced. So I'm, you know, whether at any time through a through an email, a text, whatever, I'll take any suggestion from anybody as to what's working for them within their cities, their wards, uh, whatever whatever area they represent. Uh, on the good side, uh, I don't know if all of you have heard, but our former Sears warehouse here in Delano has been purchased uh, by a company out of Utah, and it will be the home of a distribution center for furniture and bedding, and they're looking at uh, employment of a hundred people. So once they get everything worked out, uh, we will have a distribution center here in Delano in place of the former Sears. So for us, that was great news. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, this is Zach Scrivener. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I appreciate the comments from Mayor Garola and and um, and uh, Vallejo. I I want to um, make sure that folks do know that according to our county epidemiologist that does the contact tracing, which is when you, um, when someone has COVID, you try to determine where they may have contracted it, who they may have been in contact with, um, since, et cetera, that the vast majority of the cases, the, the positive, um, the positive cases are coming from gatherings of friends and family. We're not seeing a large amount of contact tracing or, or you know, really anything to speak of that people are, are contracting in the Walmart or at the barbershop or, um, or at the gym. It's coming from the gatherings of friends and family when you're going to each other's homes. And so we all need to bear that in mind as well. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, Mr. Chair, if I may add again, and if not, then I understand. Certainly. Yes, uh, I I agree with that, uh, Supervisor. The, anecdotally, we are seeing the same uh, issues, and we're looking at what we can do to further enforce that, and also agree with uh, Council Member Vallejo. Uh, we need boots on the ground, and so I'll be happy to share with, the, uh, with this board uh, the actions and the ordinances that we have adopted thus far, uh, empowering us to enforce the governor's order. Um, and uh, we're looking into using COVID funding to ha hire people for compliance to go and inform our businesses. We would not want them to lose their license. We do not want to find them, but we got to inform them of their of the orders and their ability and the nece necessity to, to follow them, as well as more people uh, understanding that they, they can't, they can gather in, 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 in group settings and, and have these gatherings at home and we'll have code enforcement officers and compliance officers informing that. And if we have to cite people as well, um, and you know, it'd be helpful if every, every city and jurisdiction that does so, but it'd also be helpful if, if the county adopt uh, the ability for their staff and use CARES Act funding to put boots on the ground, to go into uh, these businesses and to enforce um, some of these gatherings, because that's what it's going to take, uh, leadership at the county level to enforce this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? I'm not a small one. I talked to my doctor the other day. Mr. Cryer, is your, is your oh. microphone on? Yeah, I went, to, I went to see my doctor the other day, and I, I asked him, when is COVID going to end? Is it going on and on? He said, don't look at me, I'm just a doctor. Talk to your politician. <laughs> so uh, I think after November, I think it'll all go away or, or, or be a new one. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cryer. 
Any other comments? <laughs> Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.